Good morning. Um, hold up. Let me make sure I push all the right buttons here. Fading away. Whoa, look at that. I don't know what I'm doing here. It's too early. I need more coffee. And okay, I think this thing is working. I've created a beast. So good morning. I wanted to try and quickly, I'll try to make it quick, um, cover a change in the new BC container helper and what that means and what I've discovered so far. It seems like a minor change. I read it and I thought, okay, that makes sense. I didn't understand what the implications were. And so now I'm starting to see some of the implications of this seemingly small change that has been released in the new BC container helper. So let me take a look at that. So you may have seen on August 11th, Freddie announced his new BC Container Helper. It is the new version of Nav Container Helper, essentially the same functionality, but he made some structural changes and made it easier to support and uh, made some other enhancements. And so now he'll be adding enhancements to a dev or pre-release branch. And you can request that pre-release branch directly and install that version of BC Container Helper, or you can stick with the stable branch. So you have a choice now. So he can make some changes, whether just new features or breaking changes or whatever on the, the pre-release branch and keep those separate. And one paragraph in his blog post is about sandbox containers being multi-tenant by default with BC Container Helper. Now you can turn that off. So you can say sandbox containers are multi-tenant by default equals false. That's a pretty descriptive string. And uh, that way you just get a single tenant container just like Nav Container Helper. But if you want to develop against multi-tenant and work with multi-tenant just like say a um, the SaaS uh, online sandbox environment, you can do that now on Docker. So I thought, oh, that's cool. It, it presumably mimics the behavior on the online version of BC. So I think that's good. We can kind of better emulate that in our development, testing, pipelines, the whole bit. Great. Well, I didn't understand what that meant. Um, and so first thing I noticed, I thought, huh, I just happened to notice that the images for my BC Docker images suddenly had a dash MT. And I had read the blog post a day or two before. I didn't quite connect the two. So I didn't know what this meant. I said, huh, why is MT on there? These are different images. And after a few, few days, I'm kind of slow. It dawned on me that this meant multi-tenant. Ta-da! Of course, this was blatantly obvious to many other people, but you know, it takes me time to understand these things. And once I connected the two, I thought, oh, okay, that makes sense. But I still didn't know what that meant. So <laughs> then <laughs> I wondered, well, why can't I access my tenant anymore in the web browser? I was typing in, like in this example, bc dev2 slash bc. Why can't I connect? I didn't get it. Like, what was wrong? What did I do wrong with my build? Well, then I launched it from the icon on the desktop and I saw this parameter, question mark tenant equals default. So my understanding is now, if you wanna access your BC container that was built using BC Container Helper, 
that is a the new multi-tenant container, you need to specify this parameter in the URL. Um, this, this may change. This is as of uh, August 26. So this may change in the future as BC Container Helper um, is enhanced or evolves. But right now, my understanding is you have to add this BC tenant equals default parameter in order to tell the web browser which tenant it's going to hit. And I think right now we only have the default tenant with these containers. But again, I'm learning. But that's another thing I learned. I didn't realize that, so I mistakenly just pulled up the typed in the URL without that parameter, and I could not log in. I got an error when I authenticated with the um, web browser to the container. So that is important to know. Next, if you try to publish your Visual Studio Code AL projects, the way you used to do it from scratch as a beginner with the single tenant um, Docker containers that you know you used to use with Nav Container Helper, that also will not work. And I'll show you what happens with that. It will try to authenticate and it'll just keep prompting you for the username and password, no errors or anything. Now, strangely, I, later on, I did some other testing and somehow it just published. I don't know how I got it to work, but I then started a new project from scratch with ALGO and I was able to reproduce the issue. So I think it's going to be an issue you'll run into quickly if you forget to specify the tenant in your launch.json. So another thing you need to remember. And that led me to find this link. This is a Microsoft Docs page that lists the uh, parameters or settings you can put in the various JSON configuration files for your VS Code AL projects. And there are 20 different parameters that can go in just the launch.json, one of which is tenant. So um, you will want to do that properly for these new multi-tenant containers. And this, <laughs> I didn't even occur to me, the multi-tenancy also affects API calls to your BC container. And so Daniel posted this to Twitter and he's saying, well, how do I call my, my uh, APIs for a multi-tenant container now? Like the, the structure isn't different. And this made me realize I'd never tried to call the API endpoints for, uh, for my BC containers locally. I've still just done testing with my online sandbox demo tenant. And so it occurred to me, I had no idea how to structure the URL to first access the BC container API, and then how to call the multi-tenant API. So great question. And this is actually a long thread. So if you wanna find this thread on uh, Daniel's Twitter account, you can see the conversation that ensues. and I. I, you know, naively posted something thinking I even understood what the issue was. I was way off. Um, there's a, it's a slightly different, more nuanced um, complexity to that uh, tenant slash environment parameters in the URL and how that's set. And then um, AJ and Freddie jumped in to clarify. And I don't fully understand what that means yet. Um, I, I kind of get it, but I don't understand the inner workings where this like mysterious parameter is set, but apparently Freddie is going to expose that or allow you to set that in a future release of BC Container Helper. So just something to be aware of if you're doing API development against containers, the new BC Container Helper multi-tenant containers will affect your API calls. So something to keep in mind. And if you are interested in figuring out what the format is, I did some searching and I found this on GitHub. And this comment is on a thread uh, issue 3D5 under the Nav Docker project. And this is by Henrik Westergaard, I believe. And he is the project manager in charge of the uh, Business Central APIs and that uh, API connectivity. Let me turn my lights up a little. And so this is the structure. And so I, I found this and I was like, oh, okay. So this kind of helps. Now, 
back to Daniel's question, you do still need to specify tenant equals default in your API calls in order to direct that to the appropriate tenant in Docker. But this is the base URL for working with containers. So something I'd never even looked into before, so that's valuable information. And this is an example of what an API URL would look like. The first one is an OData example. So you'd have your OData URL and you do question mark tenant equal default to add that parameter. And then the second one would be your, um, your API v1.0 or the open API version. And you do question mark tenant equal default at the end as well. So pretty straightforward, but if you don't know to supply it, <laughs> you'll be stumped wondering what's going on. Okay, and, um, oh, looks like I duplicated that. And uh, that's what I was referring to, the rest of the thread where AJ and Freddie talk about how this will be incorporated into BC Container Helper going forward. Okay, so let me jump into a couple quick demos of how I kind of bumped into this and obvious for many new to me and perhaps new to you if you're you know rambling along on this new road to learning business central with docker containers so here we are here is a very simple right out of the box al go template in visual studio code and i have a container called test one here. So I'm going to try and publish against it. So I've just got a hello world. I'm going to press control F5. And you see that I'm prompted for username at the top. So I'm going to type in my admin and I'm using user password authentication on this Docker container. If you're using Windows authentication, you might get slightly different behavior. I'm not sure. I haven't tried that yet. Entered admin. I'm entering the password here. And of course it works. Okay, so let's just see what happens here. So it wasn't supposed to do that, but let me show you, let's see if this error. Okay, so notice I'm getting a login error. So that is one possible symptom of not having the tenant equal default. So let me just start with a new project and show you what I encountered. Um, close folder. And so I'm going to do F1 and AL go and AL project three, 5.0 and own server. And I'm going to change the host to test one and the server instance to BC. I'm going to save that. Press Control F5 to publish. Compiling. Okay. So I guess there are three different variants of this error, but I'm trying to show you the simplest one that had me stumped. So this is another one. This is if I close a project, create a new one, it's saying could not publish. And it's saying, um, it's giving me an error down here, request for the path, the application object type, there are project two by default. And so I'm having a project conflict. So, okay, so let me see if I can change this to, where are my files? This may be just coincidental. Okay, so let me just call this project nine, see if that matters. Control F5, no, okay. So let me close Visual Studio completely. Come on, I can't even demo an error properly. Um, close folder and reload window. Okay, so let's do F1, AL go, project four, 5.0. Your own server, test one, fingers crossed, save. Whoa, did something wrong there. Or it crashed, I'm not sure. Okay, so control F5.
Oh, come on. File. Close folder. I just tested this before I went live, and it worked, of course. Okay. F1. AL go. Project 5. 5.0. 5 my server. Now, I'm going to skip. This is slightly different. I'm going to skip authentication here. Just press escape. I'm going to change localhost to test1. Go to BC. Control S to save. Control F5. Okay, well, what I was getting was it would prompt me for the username up at the top. I'd enter admin. Prompt me for the password. I'd enter password. Press enter. It would immediately prompt me again for username and password and then username password just over and over in a loop. And um, it, I couldn't authenticate and I was pretty puzzled. So let's see, the request for this path failed. Okay, so let me just see if my tenant is even working properly. Test one web client and you notice tenant equals default here. Okay, it looks like it's working. Oops. And, okay, let me just try again. Control F5, no, okay. Close folder, F1, reload. Let's just try one last time and then I'll give up. AL Project 6 5.0. Okay, so let me see what happens here. Admin, let me just enter it here. Password. Okay, no problems have been detected so far. That's encouraging. And let me go to test one, BC. It is test one. Yep, okay. And save, control F5. Now it should prompt me right away. Okay, so this may be a different variant that you see cannot publish package to the server. Here's the resolution. You come down here, you add a new parameter to your launch.json. And let me just maximize this. Tenant default. That's it. So just as I have to have tenant default here, I need to specify the tenant in the VS Code launch JSON file. Now, this may be as of now, and there may be a different way to do this in the future, or different ways you can specify different tenants, but tenant equal default is the current method with this version of BC Container Helper multi-tenant containers. So now, Control F5. Okay, so it could be I have something else going on. Okay, so page extension is defined in multiple apps. <coughs> let's try to fix that. So let's call this, so I probably published something, um, Hello World 50101, okay? And just out of curiosity, let me delete this, see if I can reproduce the problem I'm looking to do. Control F5. Come on, folks. Okay, so this is one of the things you'll see if there is no tenant default in the URL. So you try to sign on, it looks like your, your container is working, but you cannot sign on due to a technical issue. I've seen that before and that's what drove me nuts. I was puzzled because I manually typed this in and I didn't realize that tenant equal default was a, a browser URL parameter. So now that I've kind of tried to authenticate control F5 and it's redirecting me without publishing. So kind of strange. So now if I do tenant equals default save Control F5. Did it publish? Yeah, so it did publish. So it's weird. Sometimes it doesn't publish. Sometimes it does publish. I don't know how it publishes without a tenant. Um, but 
just something to be aware of. Okay, so let me see what else I was going to show. Oh, yes, um, APIs. Yep. Okay, so here is an example of the API URL. I showed a screenshot of it, but if I remove the tenant default, a tenant was not specified, but it is needed because the system has multiple tenants. So you have to add that question mark tenant equal default to the URL when you're calling the APIs. And then for instance here, I have companies, a company ID, I wanna list items, question mark tenant equal default. And again, if I remove that, a tenant was not specified. So you'll learn really quick, you'll get an error and you'll wonder what's going on. So the same applies to the OData um, URL. So OData v4, company, tenant equal default, exact same thing. And let's see if I get the same error. Yep. So there you go. So that is what I wanted to share about some of the things you'll need to learn and be aware of. And remember, if you're new to this whole BC AL Dev Container, BC Container Helper, et cetera, et cetera, that new BC Container Helper multi-tenant feature may trip you up if you are not aware of these small details. Now, as I mentioned, you can disable the uh, multi-tenancy. There is that flag that Freddie put in um, to disable the multi-tenant feature. And so you can create a new container just like you did with Nav Container Helper, a single tenant container, and you won't have this issue. But I, I, I'm guessing there's some benefit to that in that it, I'm hoping more closely mimics the SaaS environment where customers could have multiple tenants. Um, so with that, have a good day. I hope this was helpful and go code. Jeez.